Captain Mike's Rigging Station. Once we get to the area we're going to fish, there's some things that we do to increase our score. First, we'll immediately put a chum bag into water before we even anchor. The chum goes into water. Do a couple of figure eights, a couple of big circles around the area, get that scent flowing, start to get those fish <laughs> sniffing around going, hey, what's about to happen here? So we want to get them fired up as quickly as we can. I'll then position the boat appropriately based on the wind and the current to make sure that my chum is flowing off the back of the boat over those sharp ledges and drop-offs where I know those snappers are held up. Once we're tight, we're tight on the anchor. We've come back into position. The chum is flowing behind the back of the boat. Everything is looking good. We haven't put a bait down yet. We're taking our time here. We don't want to spook these fish. Remember, during the spawn, there's big numbers of mangroves, but the majority of them are in that 12 to 16 inch range. Yeah, they're keepers and they're fun to catch, but we're looking for the next grade of fish, the 16 to 24 inch fish, okay, the bigger grades. And yeah, you know, you know as well as I do. Look, you can run way out into the Gulf of Mexico, up off of the East Coast, you can run way offshore, and that's where you're gonna find the giant mangroves. I'm talking fish that are, you know, eight pounds, eight to 10, some even more giants. We don't see those here on the patch roofs. Let's be honest, in that 32 to 35 feet of water, very, very rarely are we ever gonna see a mangrove that's an honest six to eight pounds. Once in a while, but rarely. We're really looking for those three to five pound fish, which are quality. They're a lot of fun to catch on the appropriate tackle. They're a bigger grade of fish. And I'll tell you what, arguably the absolute best tasting of all snapper, okay? So we're there. We're there early before everybody else is, because I'll tell you what, once that fleet shows up, eh, it's done. So we're there early, we've got our chum flowing, now it's a matter of deploying baits. Key bait, I've said this before, and I'm gonna tell you again, listen to what I'm saying to you. If you wanna catch the larger mangrove snapper, you need large baits. You need a live bait, like a beautiful, small to medium size, healthy pinfish. That's key right there. The only other bait that I count on is a fresh ballyhoo. And I catch them using the ballyhoo. I'm anchored up, I'm chumming. There's ballyhoo swimming up the slick. I don't want to throw a cast net. Really noisy, spook everything around. I'm going to deploy a ballyhoo and I'm going to scoop up a whole bunch of fresh ballyhoo. It's so, so simple. And that's going to be my secondary bait. In either scenario, we use the same rig. You know, there used to be a day when we used to go reef fishing and mangrove fishing and bring a truckload of gear and all sorts of different types of rigs. And, you know, we've really simplified it all, but not only is it easier, it's even more effective. For starters is my basic go-to reef rod. It's a Chaos Gold conventional rod uh, rated for 12 to 20 pound line, nothing super fancy, okay? Affordable, very versatile, matched to a Shimano Torium 16, little workhorse of a conventional reel, plenty of line capacity. Not that you're concerned with that because you're only fishing in 30 to 35 feet of water, but nevertheless, plenty of line capacity, super smooth, star drag, easy to operate. I can count on this little crank horse here. You know, that's what I call it. It's just a, an awesome little conventional reel. 